All right, <laughs> let's get cracking here. Uh, what's going on, everybody? This is uh, Sanglucci here with a uh, webinar here leading up to our uh, master course here, which is going to start uh, next week uh, on the 12th, I want to say, the 12th or the 13th. Yeah, Monday on uh, the 12th. Uh, we'll go ahead and talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but the topic today here is the three reasons. Um, and of course, there are more. Of course, there are more that you get into a losing trade. OK, and we're talking about the ethos of this trade. OK, and what do I mean when I say ethos? Well, I'm, I'm talking about the beginning, you know, the, the idea generation sort of standpoint here. Um, and let me share this uh, this other screen here with you guys. Um, so basically, like, what, you know, what causes us to get into trades that are doomed to be a loser? Before the shit even starts, okay? Now, we're not talking about execution here. We're not talking about when you get in a trade, um, you know, why do you end up taking these things for a loser? That is a whole other webinar, which we will do, uh, you know, during the master course. I do a full psychology session, uh, you know, during the master course here, basically, where we just kind of break apart, um, you know, the reasons why we do what we do and the reasons why, uh, you know, you're going to have to really – Dig deep uh, to find out why, uh, you know, you're making some of the decisions that you are making. Um, but we are talking from from the starting point. You know, what are some of the reasons here uh, that we are selecting these sort of losing trades um, to begin with? OK, and the, and the one that I want to start off for uh, is the financial need. OK. And this is something that I do during the course. I'll actually do it right now. I'll bring in uh, an example here of when I started trading. And, you know, for me starting out trading, it took me a year and a half, guys, to become profitable. Um, you know, and some of you guys might take longer. Some of you guys might take shorter. This is my actual P&L sheet from when I started trading back in 2007 i actually started in 2006 but then i you know started to keep a record of it and look at this i'm you know i'm trading piddly size over here trying to make 10 bucks and 20 bucks and everything and i'm trying to figure the shit out remember at this time i was only trading equities or whatever and commissions were pretty high at that at that, at that point back in 2007 um and there were financial reasons though that i was making trades off of okay let me give you an example right um let's say you know for me i just had a kid right and i quit my job and obviously you need to provide right i mean if we're not if we're not bringing money home what the hell are we doing in life right you got to provide for your family here and that's kind of what i was looking at the market to do for me uh, you know, even when I started making money and, and you can see every single month here, look at this losing month, losing month, uh, you know, losing month. And then sometimes I would make money, um, you know, but then I'd end up still losing a lot over the fees. I think this is the first time that I made money, 120 bucks. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> right. Um, and remember I'm like 24 at this time. I'm just sitting at this desk with a bunch of other traders trying to figure this shit out. And eventually it was like, OK, you know, what 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 am I doing for money here? If I can't make money doing this, then what is the what is the purpose? Right. What is the purpose? We ain't making money doing this shit. Um, you know, where are we going here? And that's another big issue uh, for most traders. So, you know, you live and define you define yourself by the profits and the losses that you make. Now, granted, there is one side of it that is true. And then there's another side of it that is completely, completely uh, uh, not true and it'll put you in a really bad headspace and you can see month after month you know small money but most of the time I'm losing money here fees are out the are out the ass um, and eventually I got to the point where it was like okay you know <laughs> you really need to start making money luckily I had some other things going on so I wasn't I wasn't like dying but there were so many other traders in there that couldn't do anything you know what I mean I mean they they, they lost most of the things that they had they were either living uh, you know it, with with somebody else kind of supporting them uh, and sometimes that's how it's gonna be in the beginning uh, and then I finally had kind of like a breakout month. This is the first month here where I finally really made some money. But remember, I had all these losses in the back, so I'm still kind of down and I'm still kind of negative. OK. And at this point, like I started to go about the game like, OK, I got to make, you know, three thousand to four thousand dollars a month. How many of you guys have done this? Right. You kind of budget out. Right. You budget out. 
and you say to yourself, okay, if I can make $500 a week or if I can make $500 a day, how many of you guys have done this uh, in your trading career? Maybe you're not doing it now, but how many of you guys have actually have actually done this? I would I would be I'd be willing to bet 75 percent of you or 90, you know, more towards 90 percent of you uh, has done this. OK, now, why don't you go ahead and tell me, like, what happens to you when you do this? Right. What happens to you when you put the expectations on your trading? What happens to you in life? Even forget about trading. What happens to you? Any goal that you're trying to hit? What happens to you when you put those expectations on yourself? What are some of the things that happen to you? I'll tell you what happens to me. For me is if I put a goal on myself, like for example, like I wanted to make, you know, 3,000 or 4,000 a month. That's what I wanted to make. Now, what ends up happening is that my decisions on a daily basis, they end up being affected. They end up being affected by that particular goal, by the need to get to that particular goal. Jesse is saying you get kind of twitchy. James is saying you end up losing. Um, you know, it, it, it depends. It depends on your psychological construct. It depends on how mentally tough you are. But me, like I'm a pretty emotional guy. So let's say if I'm at, you know, let's say if I hit like 3,500, you know, by the end, and, and some of you guys are coming in with the whole force trade and we over trade. That's what I was looking for. So let's say I get to 3,500 on the month, right? I'm so attached to that 4,000. I got to make 4,000. I got to make 4,000. Otherwise, I won't be able to pay the Comcast bill or my girl's going to leave me or whatever the hell, whatever the hell it is. Um, then you end up forcing shit. You end up coming out here and forcing shit like crazy. I'll give you a huge example. Um, I think I had a, uh, I think I had a monster month here where I, I was up, I was, I was up like 70 or 70 and change. And remember, this is back in 2008 or 2000. Yeah, this is back in 2008. So this is September, 2008. I put the dollar amount on myself that I was going to make a hundred grand and look at what ended up happening. You know, I ended up getting fucking smoked, I, you know, and, and I'm just for I'm just I'm just I'm just going hard because, you know, I have all the size, the juice is there, the volatility is there. And but your mind is all kind of jacked up because your mind is stuck on the wrong motivation. OK, and that's back to our point here. You know, what is one of the big points of us with uh, with starting uh, from a losing standpoint is the financial need. One of the things that I learned so much, uh, you know, during my 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 short stint as a as a prop trader um, was that the money wasn't the the money wasn't the wasn't the, the it wasn't the right end goal. OK, so chasing after the money was the wrong way to go about it right um and it's kind of like it, it's kind of a weird thing to say because again we all are trading for this money but at the end of the day it was about the opportunity it was about the trade that was on the table it was all about okay market's super volatile right now i can have a twenty thousand dollar day i can have a twenty you know twenty five thousand dollar day i can have a a six-figure day you know, because the juice is there and the volatility is there. So let's go and fucking trade. Now, if all of a sudden the market goes dead and you're out here with the same kind of size, forcing those same kind of trades, what ends up happening to you? You know, most of us, we, you know, a lot of us end up destroying the whole month, uh, you know, on the, on the, on the choppy days or the days where there's nothing to trade, but you're just trying to force it because you're married to something. You're married to something. A lot of you guys are saying blown up accounts. This is where you blow up accounts, okay? And it could be something as simple as a financial need, as a financial goal for that particular month or that particular day, you know? So having a set on, 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 on let's say, a, a dollar amount, and then you go ahead and stop trading, you know, that's one thing. You know, let's say you have five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars that you want as a goal. And once you hit that goal, you stop trading. That's good discipline, you know, and that's just saying, hey, you know what? I made my money. I'm going to go ahead and, and make sure I book this money and come back tomorrow. If the opportunity is there, hopefully I can make another thousand dollars. That's good discipline. But now if you have a goal where now you're trading recklessly and now your mind is, is fixated on that goal, that financial need. 
This is where the bad decisions start to happen. This is where shit like this starts to happen, you know, where you're just not realizing like, hey, you know what? The market ain't giving you this shit. The market is not giving you this shit. So why are you pushing it? Why are you pushing it? And then what happens is when you push that much, it just keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper unless the volatility is there so you can bring your ass back. Luckily, in the markets that we have now, we're pretty volatile. You know what I'm saying? So you can be down 10 grand or 20 grand or 100 grand and you can come back and you can come back. You know, that's the market that we have now. All right. But shit changes all the time. So that's the one, uh, you know, that's the one I wanted to start off for the financial need, a.k.a., you know, you got to pay for rent or you have a blown up sort of world that you're trying to get to. How many of you guys put yourself way down the, you know, you put yourself where you want to be two years from now and you trade like you're actually there? All right. And it's kind of it's kind of weird here. You got to think about this for a second here. Let me throw it. Let me throw it back out there again. How many of you guys trade like you like you want to be in two years or three years or five years? How many of you guys actually do that? All right. A lot of you guys are saying yes right now. Like that's that's a mind fuck right there. You know what I mean? And what's actually happening is that you're you're projecting onto the market what you already believe you can do. But you've never fucking done. You've never done that shit. You think you're going to be out here being a six-figure trader or a seven-figure trader, but you ain't shit. You over here, you, you, you're not there yet. You don't have the risk management. You don't know how to deal with size. You don't know how to do any of this shit. But you're trading here like you, you, like you assume that, that, that you're already there. So you know what else happens in that situation? No P&L is enough. You know what I'm saying? You make $500. That shit ain't enough because you live in two years from now. You're living, you're living, assuming that you're trying to stack up for something, for something in your future that has no bearing on what you're doing right now. I'm only saying this because I know what that feels like. I've had situations where, you know, I wanted to buy some property. I wanted to, uh, uh, you know, get a stake in a couple of businesses and I wanted to do all this kind of stuff. And I put all this pressure on my trading to get me there. So it was like, yo, I, I need a hundred grand to start this new venture. So I'm going to come into the market today and I'm going to fucking, I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to try to beat the crap out of something so that I can get this money for some bullshit that doesn't even, that, that, that doesn't even exist. It doesn't exist. It, it only exists in your head. A lot of you guys are going like LOL and all this kind of stuff because let's face it, this is real. This is real, and these are the dumb things that we do to justify putting on a trade, all right? It's something as simple as just putting on a trade. So, for example, you know, let's say you got big plans of some crazy shit, right? And you you, you come in and take a look at this price line. You know what? You, you start creating where these things are going to go, and then you start getting attached to where these things are going. Meanwhile, the market hasn't told you – the market hasn't even opened yet. The market hasn't told you shit. You haven't even looked at the tape. You haven't even looked at anything, but you've already believed in your mind that if Priceline goes to 2170 or 2180 or whatever the fuck it is, and I got a couple of options here, I'm going to make 10 grand. And you sell yourself on that idea before the fucking market has even opened, before it's even shown you that, hey, yeah, I can, I, I, I may have the possibility to do that. So then what ends up happening? You buy an option. That let's say is that, I, I don't know, let's say you go ahead and buy this 2180 call, right? And you put 10 grand in this shit and you think you're going to get a sell at five bucks. You think you're going to get a sell at seven bucks. You think you're going to get a sell at eight bucks. And you've already done the math in your head. You've already done the math in your head. You said, okay, if this shit's going to seven bucks, I'm going to go ahead and make, I'm, I'm going to make, you know, uh, 50K on this trade. Whatever it is, right? Meanwhile, shit hasn't even opened yet. You go ahead and buy this thing. Priceline goes dead. This option goes to zero, and you lose every fucking dollar that you put into this thing. All right? So what am I talking about? I am talking about when you are driven by a financial need, all right, which, again, is pure bullshit, all right? Any number that you come up with is a fabrication of your fucking mind. Therefore, it is complete bullshit. So even if you want to make $500 on a day or $1,000 on a day, it is an arbitrary fucking number. All of these numbers are arbitrary 100%. However, when you place them in your mind, it does something to your decision making. 
All right. It controls your decision making to a subconscious level that sometimes you don't have fucking control of. And when you get into these situations, hello, losers. Hello, losers. How you doing? And this is what's going to end up happening to you. OK, so that's the one. Re that's the, that's one of the big reasons I want to throw out there first. Number two. Number two, first reason we have financial need. And number two, trying to satisfy an emotional or psychological need by way of a trade. Okay. And this is a little this is a little bit different. It's similar in the sense that it affects us subconsciously. We 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 kind of don't know it's there, but this is what's guiding us. Um, one of the one of the, one of the examples could be uh, uh you know the need to be right. OK, the need to be right on a trade, uh, you know, that's that's one of the big ones. So as soon as a trade is showing you that that, hey, I'm not a fucking long go, a.k.a. Snapchat, the worst stock in the motherfucking world. Um, you know, I'm 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 not a great long go. Uh, you know, it's very difficult for you to make money on the long side in a name like a Snapchat. But you don't want to be wrong. You don't want to be wrong. So what ends up happening? You keep throwing money at it. You keep throwing money at it. You can't detach yourself from the idea that you are wrong or you're not even thinking about the fact that you are wrong. You're just thinking of the fact that, yeah, hey, I just got to hold it out. I got to hold it out. I got to hold it out. Um, you know, there's so many of these these trades that we end up making. Um, and then you can even throw out the short traders right now. How many of the bear traders out right now are just getting trapped at every one of these places and they're getting smoked left and right? But they want to be right. They want to believe that this market is just going to crash and they'll do anything here to put on those positions, uh, you know, and, and just and, and just make sure they're there. And if they're not there, you know, they get kind of crazy. It's like, oh, I have to have it because this could happen at any time, at any time, at any time. Motherfucker, there's no sign. That we are going to panic ridiculously yet, um, you know, and 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 have these huge uh, uh, down days that uh, you know that that we used to have in 2008 or 2009. So one of the examples is the need to be right. Okay, another big example for me trying to satisfy like an emotional or psychological need, um, you know, is 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 not necessarily the the to 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 be right on a trade, but it's it's the attachment. It's the attachment once you make the trade. OK, so, you know, I know we're kind of leaning the side on like when you're actually in the trade, but we got to throw it out there anyway. You know, so let's say, you know, let's say you, you, you were confident in something. So, for example, this Expedia here, I was totally confident in this thing blowing and going to fucking 90 bucks, you know, and this thing completely blowing up. And I had a swing position on this thing. And then all of a sudden I look at the market. I look at booking. I look at price line. Uh, you know, and I look at a couple other, I look at a couple of the other travel names and I'm like, yo, this shit is different. I'm looking at the tape on Expedia. I'm like, yeah, this no longer looks like a freaking short anymore. You know, maybe I'm going to get a cheaper price on this, but what ended up happening? I ended up holding that position and now, you know, most of my options got burned down to nothing. Okay. So this is going to happen to you. This is going to happen to all of us, uh, you know, at some period in time. And, you know, you could throw out your stops there or whatever the case is. But in reality, like this happens to all of us, you get bias and then you get attached to that bias. And when you get attached to that bias, now you're talking about a snowball effect of shitty decisions after that. OK, and then not only that. You have an opportunity cost, okay? So for me, my, my my satisfying an emotional or psychological need is 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 almost indirectly uh, just taken away because my mental capacity is taken away by something else. You guys understand what I'm saying? So basically, what I'm saying is that your mental capacity is now fixated on that loss and how and how we got to fix that loss, right? Because you don't want to book that loss. So then you go ahead and start doing what? What do you start doing? You start averaging up, right? You start averaging down, whatever the hell you want to call it, right? And you try to get yourself out of this. Now, meanwhile, while you're doing this, what ends up happening, okay? You miss out on all kinds of shit. You miss out on everything. You miss out even on good decisions you're missing out on. You're missing out on a clean slate where you can start over and you can take a look at the market and be like, all right, do I want to be a part of this shit or not? OK, so so indirectly here by satisfying that need of mine, uh, you know, emotionally here, I'm, I'm opening myself up to, uh, you know, that that opportunity cost An opportunity cost in the in the market 
yo, man, <laughs> there's no value you can put on opportunity costs, all right? There, every one of you guys in here is a coulda, woulda, shoulda motherfucker, all right? You guys say coulda, woulda, shoulda every single day. That's what we live with. We live with coulda, woulda, shoulda. All right. Now, the only way that you got a shot here is making sure that your mental capacity, your mental facility is open enough so you can catch one of these coulda, woulda, shoulda. All right. That's all you in there for. That's it. <laughs> That's it. There's about 20 of them that are going to happen every day, sometimes even 200. All right. All you got to do is be out there catching a couple. That's it. That's all you got to do. You got to catch a couple and you're fucking good. However, if you are tied up, if you are tied up, your, if your mental facility is tied up, you ain't doing shit out here, all right? Your coulda, woulda, shoulda is going to be worse than everybody else, all right? Your coulda, woulda, shoulda is going to be disgusting. Not only that, your account here is going to hate you, and you're going to blow up your account too. So not only do you have no money to trade with, now you have all this opportunity that you missed out on because your stubborn ass was too attached or whatever to a trade or to an idea that you created. And you got married to, and now all of a sudden you can't, you can't, you can't dip out. Okay, how many of you guys have seen Heat, uh, the movie Heat with Pacino and uh, and uh, Bobby De Niro? Okay, like, come on, you guys, you guys got to see it. What 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 quote am I about to say? Right? Don't get attached to anything you can't walk out on. If you see the heat coming around the corner, you know what I'm saying. So you know immediately when you're fucking wrong. You know immediately. When you're wrong and when you need to pull out of some of these things, but you can't do it because you get attached and then your mental facility is gone. That shit is gone. You need to realize the value in trading in you trading is your mental capacity and your mental facility. If you don't have that shit, you ain't you ain't making no money in here. All right. Forget about money. You can't make a good decision to save your life. And what happens is the worst thing has to happen before you wake up and smell the freaking roses. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So that's number two right there. First one was financial need, um, you know, forcing trades here because you need to make money or you need to, you know, pay rent or whatever it is. Uh, second one here, trying to satisfy an emotional need, uh, AKA, you know, trying to be right. You know what another one is? You know what another one is for satisfying an emotional or psychological need? How many of you guys see other people making money on Twitter and that does something to you mentally? You know what I'm saying? Like mentally, mentally, it does something to you. You know, like you, you might see somebody rip a trade on here, right? You might see somebody rip a trade or something. And that gives you this anxiety, right? That gives you this anxiety. You, you, you can't put your finger on that shit. You can't put that. You can't put your finger on what it is or how it affects you. And I'm still trying to find a damn trade right here. Just, maybe it's the end of the day kind of thing. All right. But all of a sudden, you now want to go out and you now want to go out and make a trade. You now want to go out and force a freaking trade. You know what I'm saying? That's where you want to go. So if you see somebody else making money on win, you know, you're like, oh, shit, I got I got to do this, too. And you duplicate their trade. But guess what? They got in here. Your dumbass is up here like having FOMO and you go ahead and buy up here. Now, anybody who knows the markets here and understands options, if you don't, by the way, that's why you need me. If you understand options, what's going to happen to your fucking prem up here? You think you're going to double and triple? Once the easy money is done, that shit is done. That shit is done. It's done. It's a wrap. All right. Market makers are going to come back and they're going to collect that premium back. All right. They're going to take that shit back. And all the people that get in after the fact, you are going to get smoked. That's how the market works. OK, now, uh, you know, you are motivated to make this trade just because you saw somebody else double their money or triple their money. Now you want to come into the same name and try to, you know, and, and try to justify it going for a dip or whatever the case is. You're a herb. You are herb. All right. But you are motivated emotionally right there to make that trade. That trade was a dumb idea to begin with because it was motivated by your emotions. It was not motivated by common sense in the market and understanding in the market, which is our last point here, um, is is an overall and basic understanding uh, of the markets here. Our last reason is bad information. OK, basing decisions on the wrong information. All right. Now, look. I ain't here to trash your technicals, all right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not here to tell you that a Bollinger Band is really just lines drawn by by poor Vietnamese kids 
you know, using the paint program. I'm not here to tell you these things. You know what I mean? I'm not here to tell you that these these uh, these moving averages were actually, you know, were actually just somebody who was on acid and he was looking at these charts and they pay him to just draw these lines on the show. I'm not here to tell you those kind of things. You know what I mean? That's not what I'm here to tell you. However, I am here to say that your technicals here, they're not as strong and they're not as valuable as they were in a market where, uh, you know, at where, uh, again, 20, 30 years ago, where we just started using these things. Technicals now, if you put them to cryptocurrency, they work pretty well. They work, they work pretty well. OK, now they're used more for manipulation. All right. And, and this is what I see on a daily basis. They're used more for manipulation. So if you take a look at this win, you'll see a consolidation pattern. You'll see it try to break out. All your technicals will say buy here. You're going to get smoked. All your technicals here will say you got a short here. You're going to get smoked. And then finally, you get this big breakout kind of situation. OK, so so again, I'm not saying that those things are useless. I am saying that a trade is a trade and a strategy is a strategy. Whatever works for you, that shit is it. All you have to do is figure out the risk on it. And all you have to do is figure out where there's some edge. OK, but there's more edge in the market from understanding the participants involved. Do you understand how market making works? Do you understand how how, how uh, you know where options are priced? Do you understand the volatility on some of these options? You know, do you understand the concept of a shakeout? Do you understand why shakeouts happen? You know, do you really understand why a stock goes up and down? Fuck a chart, man. I don't trade ever on a chart. All right. I look at these things to give me some kind of a picture of what's going on. And then I take it here. I take it here. And this is all that matters to me. Are there fucking buyers or are there sellers? It's supply and demand. And that is it. Everything else is just a, a, a science based mathematical calculation on supply and demand through different time frames or whatever. That's why these technical indicators are created because nobody wants to sit here and look at these fucking numbers. Nobody wants to sit here and look at bid and ask. But what I'm trying to tell you, all right, is that if you understand bid and ask, if you understand these concepts, then you don't have to, it doesn't matter what fucking market you're trading. All right, you could be trading sneakers, you could be trading watches, you could be out there trading fucking diamonds or whatever, it doesn't matter. You will understand every single market, who's behind it, where's the manipulation, who are the big players involved, and how do they move the markets. That is what means something, all right? And that is where there's still some edge in the marketplace, all right? And how many of you guys trade Forex? How many of you guys trade Forex? You guys trade Forex? Anybody trade Forex? There's no fucking edge in Forex unless you got inside information on when some interest rate is going to go up or some, some geopolitical event is going to happen. OK, and everybody is forced to use technicals here on on um, uh, on Forex because there's nothing else. There's nothing else to go on. It is such a huge market. It is so fucking liquid and it is ridiculous. Your spreads are very, very tiny, um, you know, and it's a difficult market to trade. But if you look at an Amazon option, look at the spread on this thing. There's a 30 cent spread. All that is is edge. And all that means is a market maker here is going to collect on this side, collect on this side, and make money all day. Now, when there's some big buyers coming in here, that market maker is going to get hosed. They, they're going to get hosed over for, for you know, a certain period of time. And then, and then again, the market will go dead and the market makers will make their money back. All right. We live in a world here. If you're going to trade options, if you're going to trade equities, you've got a small window of time. All right. To make that edge, you know, for example, this win, we'll take a look at this win. You know, you got a small window of time to make that edge and then it closes up again. All right. If you don't understand that shit, you out here punting, you're, you're going to be out here punting on a lot of trades that you got no business being in or there's no real, you know, there's no real actionable situation behind them. OK, so that's your third reason right there on why starting out, you're selecting some losing trades to begin with okay and again this is stuff that i expand upon in my master course guys we have a huge discount for uh the master course you're getting 33 percent off we're giving it just to 10 users uh and we only have three left i believe here 
Okay, so let's start taking some questions here. Uh, I got to hook my man up, Charlie, here. Charlie is my guy in here. He'll give you all the details that you need. Uh, but let's hit, hit me off with some questions, guys. What did you feel? How did you feel about uh, some of those reasons, some of those losses? Um, you know, the reasons why we take losses. Is this stuff that you're going through? Um, you know, talk to me, guys. Any questions here whatsoever? The master course here includes tape reading. Uh, this is going to be one of the, you know, one of the most um, – intense things we kind of go through. So how to read bid and ask, how to read supply and demand, how to understand options, how to understand the pricing of these options, why are they priced the way they are, the, 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 the different things that are driving those prices, decay, uh, volatility, and things like that. And then this thing, which we just added recently, and um, is the writing strategy. So it's my own writing strategy. And this is shit that I do on a weekly basis to just collect premium. And I can just collect cheap premium and I'm, I'm just out there scraping nickels. I'm scraping dimes. Sometimes I'll get pretty aggressive on a name like a Netflix, which you which you guys saw. I'll show that screen in a second here. Um, or or if you have a juicy name like a price line, which is going up a hundred hundreds of points, you can still get fat premium. And to me, it's just free money um, if you know what you're doing and you know how to deal uh, with some of the risk here. OK, uh, so these are the two biggest parts. And then, of course, the trading psychology, which we've talked about a lot today, but there's so much more that goes into it. Um, and again, you guys know me. I'm, I'm real as fuck, man. I ain't going to tell you, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not going to be pushing you any kinds of bullshit. I'm going to tell you how it is. You know, I've gone through some serious ups and downs in my career. Uh, I've made millions. I've fucking lost millions. Um, you know, I've been motivated by so many different things in my life. Um, to me, like I now bring trading so close to life. It's like if I'm if I'm cool in life and I'm, I'm and, I, and I'm OK and I'm, you know, and I got a good head on my shoulders in life in general, meaning like, you know, peace of mind and all that kind of stuff. My trading is great. You know, sometimes if sometimes if I'm out there just doing crazy shit and I'm living wild, my trading is going to reflect as such, you know. So the shit that I'm going on in life directly correlates to my trading. And that's a big psychological fucking, you know, that, that shit is crazy. It's crazy to even think like that's how connected these things are. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, those are the components here for uh, the tape reading session. Uh, remember to, um, we do uh, live trading shit too. OK, so you're going to get a lot of you're going to get all the recordings here, too, uh, inside your your uh, your chat room. So you get a subscription here uh, and then you can go ahead and access all your videos here. You'll get a free uh, uh, um, a free wise guys revealed course. So this is me and Wall Street Jesus just telling you how to trade this shit. You know, if you guys want to scalp it, if you guys want to swing, whatever the hell you want to do, um, you know, we'll hook you up that as well. So all the access and all the videos and everything like that, uh, you will go ahead and get access to them right inside um, uh, the chat room here. And the chat room is popping these days, guys. The chat room has been popping. We have been crushing things. Uh, and there's a lot of dope traders in here uh, that I enjoy talking to every single day and shooting the shit with. So it's like a little family in here, man. And you guys know me again. I'm 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 the real I'm the real I'm the real dude. I'll throw it out there, um, and I'll talk that shit all the time uh, in the chat room as well. So anybody here who is interested here, Charlie, why don't you hit him with the links? Let's go ahead and take some questions here. Uh, let's see. What do we got? James here is saying, just think new, everything's stubborn, not taking advice. That's why I'm still not profitable in trading since 2013. You know, taking too much advice out there too, there's a lot to be said about that shit. You know, that's another, that's another huge one. Actually, we'll throw that out there. And, and James, thank you for throwing out there. You know, we'll throw that out there as, as number two, number two was, uh, what was number two? Number two was trying to satisfy an emotional and psychological need, right? So if you're out there from and, and you're talking to mad gurus and you're and you're and you're and you're out there looking at so many different strategies, you know, let's say you're looking at three different strategies at once, or even if you're out there in the chat rooms, you know, in the chat rooms, like everybody has their own strategy. You know what I'm saying? I don't even trade how I don't even trade any of this shit. I don't trade none of this shit. All right. I don't trade as 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 most of these folks do either. And one of the big takeaways for the course, guys. Is that I help you find who you are. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to find out trading is the, is the is the most deepest shit. Like you will never you will never test the places 
in your mind that you would test when you're trading. You know what I'm saying? You'll never access these places unless you're fucking trading. You'll never access how how deep things can go on the on the on the upside and on the downside unless you're trading. And again, like all this shit is is the same thing in life too. What are you out here for? What is your purpose here? What the fuck are you trying to do? Uh, you know, in trading here. You know, if it's just making a little bit of extra cash on the side, you know, you shouldn't be actively fucking day trading. What are you crazy? If you want to make some extra loot on the side, you should just be writing, you know, writing a couple options here and there and scraping some money. Most of you guys don't. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm generalizing or whatever. I'm assuming here if you guys are on if you guys are not profitable traders yet, you know, a lot of you guys are still looking for your strategy. And while you're doing that, you're also still looking for your purpose. Like, what, what, what are you really doing out here? You know, if it's just to make money, that shit ain't enough, man. That shit is not enough. So again, we break that down during the course, um, you know, and really get into the the, the psychological sort of portion of the uh, of the course. So James, thank you for that question. Um, Young here is saying, been painful, just waiting for good setups, uh, but I'm not losing, just holding flat, dude. That's the be- That's one of the best times, you know. And guys, that's another reason too. You know, for trying to satisfy an emotional or psychological need. If you're out there just punting around and let's say you've had a couple of months where you're just flat, how do you feel? You kind of feel like you're not doing shit. You know what I'm saying? You come to work every day and sit down and expect to make money. If you ain't making that money, you also kind of feel like, what am I do- what am I doing in life right now? Maybe I need to figure out another strategy. Maybe I need to do this. Maybe I need to do that. We always overcomplicate shit because of these emotions, because of these desires, because of these things that come out from third party or from way out there in thin air that don't fucking matter. They don't matter. If the market ain't paying you right now, who cares? Who cares? In another month or another two months, it will. The shit will come back around and whatever you're doing here will start getting paid again. But can you make sure you're not giving up all your money here? Can you make sure that emotionally you're not just going to give that money away? How many of you guys have gone on a great run and you gave all that shit back? How many of you guys have done that shit? And don't fuck with me, man. Don't fuck with me. You know you out here. You know you out here doing this shit. How many of you guys have gone on a great run, you know, where you made 50 grand, you made a million, whatever, relatively. It could be a couple grand or whatever. And you gave all that shit back. You gave all that shit back. How bad did you fucking feel? You can't go back, guys. You cannot go back. You can't go back. And you know exactly what happened. And it was all because of your emotions. It was all because the reason why you made the trade to begin with, the shit wasn't there. It wasn't there. The market, it's either the market's not there or your mind is not there. It's one of the two. It's one of the two. It's either the market ain't there or your fucking mind ain't there. And the reasons why your mind ain't there, it's like a million or two million reasons. All right. I'd sit here forever just trying to psychoanalyze all of you. All right. But the fact is, we're all idiots. We're all herbs and we don't have control. We don't have as much control as we think we do. OK, so how do you get that control? You got to go deep. You got to dig deep and you got to find these places in your head where you might not like what you see. Most time, actually, most of the time you ain't going to like what you see. You know, but it's about acceptance. You know, Paul here is saying, are you going to include when you have special guests like that market maker from the exchange uh, in emails or is it announced in live classes only? Um, no, we, we include those as well. Charlie, you want to hit him up, uh, uh, Paul, on this one? We have a bunch of ones from the, um, you know, from from a lot of special guests and everything. That shit is all included. Yes. So Charlie's going to hit you up on that one. Uh, Caleb here is saying, how does your trading go during the uh, low volatility times, a.k.a. all last year? Caleb, I suck. At low volatility, bro. I suck. I fucking suck. You know what I mean? I can't. I'm not the guy that's going to hold. The, I'm not the guy that's going to buy a, a, an Amazon option, even though I should. Even though I should. I'm not the guy that's going to buy an Amazon option and just watch it go up five points, ten points every single day. I ain't that guy. I'm not that guy. You know what I mean? Sometimes I can be, but most of the time what I'm really looking for is this shit. This is what I'm looking for. Here, I'll make I'll make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Here and this shit, oh my god, man, kill me, kill me, Caleb. Fucking do me a favor and kill me. You know, but luckily I got other shit going on and I can sort of peel myself away these days. You know, and it's it's not that big of a deal. You know. 
Uh, anyways, uh, we got another question here from Arthur. Uh, I had a great run trading crypto stocks. Who didn't turn 5K to 40K? Now I am fucking stuck trying to go big on options, and I'm down to 10. Uh, it hurts me. It sucks. Arthur, man, thank you for throwing that out there for the rest of us. I mean, this is a story that – um, you know, a lot of people can connect with as well. Um, my crypto account, I, I, I was at 30 and I got to about 200 and then I kept, I kept it in there and some alts and shit. And that shit came back like a mofo, man. Like some, most of my alts are dead. You know, I probably got maybe 75 K 80 K, you know, off that run. You know what I mean? So it, it's going to happen. So Arthur, you're in a position where again, like, Crypto was different. If you were in for the ride, you know, that those were gains that, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to see. You're not going to see, uh, you know, every single year. You're not going to see every single month in options. This is the crazy part with options. If you want to compare options to crypto, options are fucking light years ahead as far as the potential gains. Like some of you guys don't don't understand that. Or some of you guys like are looking at crypto like, yo, this is a place where you can make you know, whatever, uh, you know, percentage gains, Yo, an option goes a thousand percent every fucking day. There's some option out there that's going 10 times its money every single day. You know what I'm saying? And then most of the times during volatile periods, there's hundreds of them. There's legit, there's hundreds of them. So fuck crypto in reality. So if you guys are like desperately trying to get into crypto or whatever, you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't. It's great to diversify. It's great to buy some of these alts. Maybe the you know maybe you'll get a great move on them. Shorting some of these things are great too. So if you can get leverage and short some Bitcoin, short some Ether, and all that kind of stuff, though that can be real profitable too. It's just another market. You know what I'm saying? It's just another market. But if we're talking about options here, options is the fucking king of all this shit. It is the king of all this shit, hands down. Now, Arthur, you might have some issues understanding, you know, time premium. Uh, 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 you know, volatility, choosing the right expiration, choosing the right strike price. How do I read tape so I know when to get in these things? Remember, options are all about timing. If you can't time your shit right, your option is going down. Your option is going down. OK. And again, that's that's one thing we focus on. Um, it's just timing, 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 timing. OK. Uh, Ram here is saying I'm in the same boat where I didn't sell at 100 percent profit. Now I'm down to 17 percent. How can we avoid this shit? I've been feeling really bad about it. Um, you know, Ram, it's as simple as and fuck that. It's not as simple as anything like mentally conquering this shit is the most difficult thing that you will ever do. You know, so Ram, it's, a, it's about you understanding yourself. It's about you understanding that, hey, you know what? I'm up 100 percent here. You know what I mean? But I'm greedy now. I want 200 percent. I want 300 percent. But if I'm going to hold for that 203 percent, 200, whatever, I got to take half off. I got to take half off or I got to stop myself. I, I, I got to stop myself somewhere, you know. And Michael here is saying it's as simple as knowing how to take profit and be smart. Bro, if it was that simple, you wouldn't see a fucking Instagram meme telling you to do that shit every day. Everything that people say is simple. There wouldn't be 9,000 fucking reminders of how you have to do that shit, okay? So therefore, it ain't simple. It's not. It's something that you have to remind yourself all the time. And a human being is only as good as his mind or her mind at that time, okay? At that time. You could be fucked up in the game because, you know, you just got a damn divorce or you just got, uh, uh, you know, you just lost your job. Who knows what's going on? And all of a sudden, those things that were simple to you, they no longer are simple. OK, decision making over and over time and time again to be 100 percent in your decision making. Nobody is. That is why there are robots. And that is why artificial intelligence now is going to take care of a lot of the decisions that we cannot fucking take care of. And this is something that I myself am trying to get invested in for the future. Because, again, there's going to be a lot of behavioral automation that we're going to see out of the new brokers in the game. And we want that. We want that. We want you. We want you as a broker to analyze how dumb we're being and come up with some automation for it. You know what I mean? We want that. Everybody wants it. it's the same as a self-driving car. We cannot be trusted to get in our car and drive 100 percent every fucking time. Sometimes we're drunk. Sometimes we're texting shit. Sometimes we're doing all kinds of stuff. We're not paying attention. 
All right. This is exactly what the 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 why we need that automation. So again, that shit is all coming out. But in the meantime, Ram, you got to look at yourself. You got to look at your positions. You got to look at how you are, and you got to create some kind of a solution based on what you got. You know what I'm saying? You can't. We don't have that AI shit yet. So you got to you. Your mind is your edge, and if your mind is shit, you got no fucking edge. Uh, Christian here is saying any crypto classes coming out. I'm still working on it. I am still working on it. And, you know, just stay tuned here. Stay tuned. Any other questions? Any other questions? Uh, Charlie here. We good? All right. Why don't we go ahead and close it out here? Um, Buck here is talking about Netflix here. What about it? Am I on the right screen? Oh, you want Netflix? <clears throat> okay, uh, Charlie here wants me to run through the course page here for you guys again. Uh, master course, uh, sanglucci.com forward slash uh, MC. Okay, so I'll send you the link all right now. Uh, and again, uh, we're starting on the 12th. There's a lot of things included here, so you're going to get this for a huge discount, a third off the price. Usually we sell it for $3,000, you are going to get it for 2000 You get all this shit. Hopefully we see you guys in there. Um, and you'll get all the information here. All right. All right, guys. Take care. We'll see you on the next one.